Good morning, I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. Here are the stories we're following today. We begin with the tale of two high-tech behemoths. Shares of Alphabet are surging nearly 7% in early trading. The Google owner reported revenue that beat estimates thanks to advertising on the company's flagship search business, which is fending off competition from artificial intelligence. Mandeep Singh covers Alphabet for Bloomberg Intelligence. You know, it comes down to the core search business. That is what drives the uh, profit and free cash flow. And uh, I think it allayed some of the investor concerns around chat GPT and, you know, what it could do to search. I mean, in this environment, if they're able to grow revenue 5%, I think that just goes to show how strong the mode is. Bloomberg Intelligence Senior Analyst Mandeep Singh says Alphabet is also making management moves. Chief Financial Officer Ruth Parat will fill in a newly created role of president and chief investment officer starting in September. Well, it's a different picture when it comes to earnings at Microsoft, Nathan. Shares are down more than 4% this morning. That's due to concerns about a slowdown in its cloud business. And we get the details from Bloomberg's John Tucker. Microsoft investors may have their head in the cloud for now. They latched onto the company forecast for a slowdown in the cloud business. That's been a growth engine for the last decade. Revenue growth there slipped to 27% from 31% of the previous quarter. And Microsoft says that may go even lower. Well, that focus may be obscuring the company's optimism over its artificial intelligence tools. The CEO, Sachin Adela, has unveiled an array of new AI programs, and demand has been strong for Internet-based services that let customers use the open AI technologies. Bloomberg Intelligence says while Microsoft is positioned to cash in on new AI investments, it may take a few quarters. In New York, I'm John Tucker, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, John, thanks. We're also watching shares of Snap this morning. They're down nearly 19%. The social media company gave a revenue outlook that was weaker than expected. Analysts say improvements to Snap's digital advertising business are taking longer than expected to pay off. Well, Nathan, we also have a slew of earnings overseas, including some prominent names in banking. And let's head to London and get the latest with Bloomberg's Ewan Potts. Ewan, good morning. Good morning, Karen and Nathan. Many of Europe's biggest banks in focus today. But before the earnings dropped, we got the unexpected news that NatWest Group CEO Alison Rose is to step down. The 1am announcement came after heavy criticism over the closure of the bank account of a prominent British ex-politician. On the earnings front, Deutsche Bank weathered the trading slowdown better than expected, but expenses came in higher than anticipated. Spain's biggest bank, Santander, beat estimates, boosted by rising interest rates, and it was a similar story in Italy, where Unicredit lifted its full year targets for a second straight quarter. In London, I'm Ewan Potts, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Ewan, thank you. Staying with banks this morning, we're watching shares of Wells Fargo rise nearly 3% in early trading. That's after the lender announced plans to repurchase as much as $30 billion in shares. The bank is also boosting its dividend. Well, the earnings continue to roll in today, Nathan, with almost 50 companies in the S&P 500 reporting. Meta Platforms is the big name to watch. We get results from the owner of Facebook and Instagram and Threads after the closing bell. And Bloomberg's Tom Busby has more. The big focus for investors is whether the expected recovery in Meta's digital advertising business, its main source of income, actually took place. Also of note, any word on its artificial intelligence initiatives, what kind of traction it's seeing on its new Threads app aimed at taking on Twitter, also at its Instagram Reels, a competitor to TikTok. Forecast call for adjusted earnings at $2.92 a share on revenues just topping $31 billion. Tom Busby, Bloomberg Daybreak. Okay, Tom, thank you. Meta is also in the news for another reason. We're learning Republicans on the House Judiciary Committee are preparing a contempt citation against the CEO, Mark Zuckerberg. Bloomberg's Ed Baxter has that story. It involves a probe and the complaints that Meta has censored conservative speech. Committee Chair Jim Jordan has accused Meta of working with the Biden administration. The recommendation asserts Meta has largely ignored demands for internal documents covered by a subpoena that was issued in February and has only furnished communications with the U.S. government. Meta says it has operated in good faith in seeking to comply with a sweeping request for information. Jordan is scheduled to vote for Thursday. The full House would have to approve the citation. In San Francisco, I'm Ed Baxter, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Ed, thanks. Well, turning to the economy now, let's get today's big event for the markets. The Federal Reserve issues its latest policy decision today. The central bank is expected to raise interest rates, but will that be the end of this tightening cycle? We get analysis from Bloomberg economics correspondent Michael McKee. 
A divided Fed is expected to come together on the need for U.S. interest rates to go up another quarter percentage point. What's not clear is how divided they will be going forward. Some members, including Dallas Fed President Lori Logan and Governor Michelle Bowman, wanted to raise rates at their June meeting, which was the first pause in 11 meetings. Their argument is monetary policy lags are shorter now. The weight of previous tightening has already hit the economy, but inflation remains too high. Fed officials did project in June another two moves. Wall Street will be watching for any indication they will carry through with that. And if so, when? Michael McKee, Bloomberg Daybreak. And with that look at other stories making news in New York and around the world, here's Bloomberg's Michael Barr. Michael? Thank you very much, Nathan. Authorities on New York's Long Island have wrapped up their search at the home of suspected serial killer Rex Heuerman. He's charged in the deaths of three women. Their bodies found on Gilgo Beach in the past decade. Suffolk County District Attorney Raymond Tierney. I would say that we we have obtained a massive amount of of. Uh, material, which all of which has to be cataloged and and uh, analyzed, and it's going to take uh, quite some time. Suffolk DA District Attorney the also says that a large number of items, including about 280 weapons, were taken from the home. A microburst hammered a Brooklyn neighborhood, leaving streets covered in broken tree branches. It had an estimated wind speed of between 60 and 70 miles per hour. It left homeowners shocked. I've never seen anything like this in my life. It's, this is nuts. It was very scary for a minute, I'll say that. Surveillance video shows cars driving along in moderate rain on Bay Ridge Parkway in Bensonhurst when seconds later a whiteout as 70 mile per hour winds rage down the block. It's a win for immigration advocates. A federal judge is blocking strict new rules for asylum seekers. However, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre says the Biden administration's border enforcement remains in full effect, citing the stay currently in place. The Department of Justice will appeal uh, the decision and seek and extend uh, to extend the stay. And uh, as we have said multiple times, uh, our border enforcement plan works. It is deterrence, uh, it diplomacy and enforcement. We have seen we have seen uh, that plan working. Unlawful border crossing have come down to the lowest that we have seen in the past uh, two years. The requirements that have been in place since Title 42 ended are that asylum seekers must try to get asylum in a country through which they passed first, and anyone entering illegally cannot legally apply for asylum for five years. Some big names joined picket lines for striking SAG after members in Times Square. Breaking Bad's Brian Cranston. We are not in the same business model that we were even 10 years ago. Actors are calling for fair pay, revenue sharing, health care, retirement funding, and AI protection and fair compensation. While the SAG strike is in about two weeks now, the writer's strike began nearly three months ago. Global News 24 hours a day, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts, over 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg Nathan. Thank you, Michael. Time now for the Bloomberg Sports Update. Here's John Stashow. Thanks, Nathan. Pete Alonso had been mired in a deep slump. Seemed to come out of it last weekend in Boston with five hits. And at the stadium, Alonso almost single-handedly powered the Mets. The 1-1 one, one drilled in the air to deep center. Bader going back at the track, at the wall. He can't get it. It's gone. A home run. Pete Alonso hits it off the screen in front of the batter's eye. Right out at Monument Park in straightaway center field. Alonso's second home run of the game. On WCBS, at that point, sixth inning, it was Alonzo five. And the Yankees nothing as he had earlier had an RBI single and a three-run homer. The next batter was Daniel Vogelback. He homered. Jeff McNeil drove in the next three runs. All men. Mets 9 to 3. Justin Verlander, six scoreless innings for career win number 249. Domingo Herman, since that perfect game, is 0 and 2. Pitching matchup tonight Jose Quintana, Carlos Radon, both were offseason signings who were injured and have yet to win for their new teams. Two athletes, 26 and 25 years old, just signed. Five-year contract extensions worth a total of $566 million. Jalen Brown gets a fully guaranteed $304 million from the Celtics, where he's not even considered the best player on the team. The Chargers, Justin Herbert, now the fourth quarterback 
to be making over $50 million a year. The Saquon Barkley deal that was agreed to early yesterday gives him the $10 million franchise tag number, maybe a million more with incentives. Pro Football Talk reported that before the agreement, Giants were looking into trading Barkley. LeBron James' son, Bronny, out of ICU, in stable condition. The 18-year-old suffered a cardiac arrest while working out at USC, where he'll soon be a freshman. John Stash and we're Bloomberg Sports. From coast to coast, from New York to San Francisco, Boston to Washington, D.C., nationwide on Sirius XM, the Bloomberg Business app, and Bloomberg.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. Good morning. I'm Nathan Hager with the focus this morning on big tech earnings. We have heard from Microsoft and Google parent Alphabet. Both companies came in with beats on the quarter in uh, earnings and revenue, but it's a projected slowdown in Microsoft's cloud business. It seems to be overshadowing a lot of the excitement around artificial intelligence that has driven the market rally this year. So let's dive into these results now. We're joined by Bloomberg Technology reporter Aggie Cantrell. I guess, Aggie, when it comes to both these companies, it seems like investors are focused more on the fundamentals rather than the uh, potential promise of rapid growth from AI down the line. Yeah, exactly, Nathan. So, I mean, if we start with with Alphabet, um, I think what's really telling in their numbers is that uh, they are still completely dominant when it comes to um, search advertising. And Google search is still the core of their business. And there was a lot of noise in Silicon Valley and also on Wall Street about how they may lose share of that online search um, to the likes of Microsoft's Bing because of AI applications. But in the interim, while this is all very much like something that will come potentially in the future that they could they could be at risk. It, firstly, Google is also still investing in their own artificial intelligence products. And also, um, when it comes to where advertisers are looking to spend, there is really no better return on investment for them than the classic Google search, which is where people are still putting their money. Is that part of what's behind some of the disappointment we're seeing in the share price for Microsoft? There had been this big increase in prices for some of the AI products it was putting out there. And now we're getting this sort of tepid outlook, a disappointing outlook when it comes to the cloud business that has been so much of a driver of growth for all these big tech names. Yes, yeah, so the cloud business is still where a lot of the energy for Microsoft is going. And when they originally made that initial investment in OpenAI, their cloud business was a core part of that. They wanted to see how AI could uh, could be integrated into the suite of, of tools on Azure. But the thing is, is that is something that Microsoft is very much billing as a longer term strategy. Um, and our people at Bloomberg Intelligence also believe that the, that Microsoft is currently better positioned than other cloud providers than than Google, than Amazon, when it comes to monetizing new AI investments, because they're really the initial players here. But the problem is, is in the interim, um, they're making a bet for something that may not um, may not come to uh, bear out in their earnings for another couple of quarters. So right now, the sentiment around Microsoft is much more muted than Google that can turn around and say, when it comes to search advertising, when it comes to even YouTube advertising that recovered, um, we're still the dominant player. Well, if we are seeing cloud growth slow for Microsoft, at least in the interim, what does that say about the potential demand picture for AI? I think it's difficult to say at the moment. I'm not entirely sure when it comes to, for instance, uh, they seem to be pretty positive about the longer term outlook at Microsoft. Um, But also uh, when you're talking about AI, especially for enterprise applications, so much of that is also part of a broader market sentiment. I also, for instance, in Germany, cover SAP, which is also very conscious that Right now, we're trying to get people to move to the cloud, to leave on-premise systems and go to the cloud because that's where they see the future of their system. And just as with Microsoft, the problem is, is trying to get enterprise customers to buy into big cloud contracts at the moment when the when there's not a huge amount of visibility about how the economy is developing. We were talking about rate decisions from the Fed and the ECB today as well. 
all of that plays in to these sort of customers that are very enterprise focused. And these, these deals need to take a longer time for them to convince these enterprise customers to come on board. And so, yes, there does seem to be a lot of potential for the AI to bring on new customers. But I think in the current market environment, the macro market environment, um, there's still a lot more convincing that needs to be done. Just about 30 seconds left here, Aggie. We're waiting for results from Meta Platforms later on this afternoon. Is AI going to be the big focus there as well? Yes, AI is going to be a big part of Meta's conversation as well. Of course, they recently announced their own suite there, and I'm expecting that analysts We'll want to know a lot more about that from them. I'm also curious to see how their advertising spend does well, because we saw, for instance, contradictory to Google managing to recover a lot of its ad spend. Snap, for instance, had projected revenue in this current quarter that was much lower uh, or at the lower end of what analysts were estimating. So I'm keen to see where the ad spend goes for Meta as well. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Today, your morning brief on the stories making news from Wall Street to Washington and beyond. Look for us on your podcast feed at 6 a.m. Eastern each morning on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen live each morning starting at 5 a.m. Wall Street time on Bloomberg 1130 in New York, Bloomberg 991 in Washington, Bloomberg 1061 in Boston, and Bloomberg 960 in San Francisco. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. Plus, listen coast to coast on the Bloomberg Business app, Sirius XM Channel 119, the iHeartRadio app, and on Bloomberg.com. I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. Join us again tomorrow morning for all the news you need to start your day right here on Bloomberg Daybreak.